Nam. How you doing? Hey, Sean. Thanks for having me. Hey, no problem. I, you know, I was reading something. I know a lot of people knew about it. That uh, yeah, I think it was back in July. Um, you had told Ariel Hawani that you wanted to fight Steven Seagal. Would you still take that fight if it was offered? Oh, for sure. Easy. I freaking hate that guy. I'll do that fight for free. But that would, dude, that would be murder if you got your hands on him. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad someone thinks so. There's just people out there that think they can really fight. You know, I say for God's sake. Yeah, oh, I saw the sparring. I guess it was it was him with, um, uh, I think it was, I can't even remember. He was uh, sparring and doing slap boxing, and he slapped him one good time. And I remember thinking, oh, my God, this guy is going to kill that old man. You know, I, think, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm with you. I think the guy kind of lives in a fantasy world. He has to. Is he crazy? I I, I bet he was created to go or his fans. Yeah, I know. Well, you know, we had Alan Belcher on. We had a lot of guys, especially Roger Bowling, you know. And, and people get, you know, trashed a lot for talking about Seagal because of what he's done for the movies and, and whatnot. But you actually think it's a black eye on the sport, guys that live in their own dream world, and they come into MMA and they start selling themselves and what they've done. Big time. I, it's, yeah, I, a little, little ticked off. You know who uh, George Dillman is? Yes, I, yes, I do. George Dillman, yes. Uh, um, he's a pressure point guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rio Jiu Jitsu or whatever. We had him on the radio show, and he argued with Jens Pulver, I think it was probably for a good 20 minutes, on force versus chi. And he goes around and does all these seminars, you know, and he, he, he believes it's real. No one, and, you know, uh, James Randi had a challenge, you know, the million dollar challenge, but no one could could prove to him that they could actually not use Chi to knock anybody out. And like uh, Pedro, our editor, said, he said, uh, you know, I want him to try that on me. I want him to block Ooh. my punch with his Chi. So, um, you know, I think that's the same thing with Seagal. And I thought it was interesting that it was you who had sort of called him out because, I mean, straight up, Nam, you're like the nice guy. Anybody who knows you that I talk to is like, oh, Nam's so nice. Is that is that the rep you think you have? <laughs> I, I I would like to think so. I mean, I try to portray myself as a you know a gentleman, a pretty good um, role model to the community. You know, I, I I like to think so. Yeah, and I, I think that's rare. You know, Rich Rich Franklin's a friend of mine, and he is always a nice guy. I mean, he was out there in <clears throat> excuse me in Hong Kong. He was palling around with uh, you know Kung before their fight coming up because that's just how he is. And I mean, from what I understand, you're pretty much the same way, right? Uh, I try to. Yeah, I just try to be just. You know, business and just try to be friendly to everyone, you know? Well, you fought King of the Cage, Strike Force, World Victory Road, I think um, GFC, PFC. I mean, you fought pretty much everywhere. You've been through the ringer, and you went through the Ultimate Fighter, and you're still you're still the same person. Was that hard to do? No, not not even. Not even a big deal. I, you know, I fight because I, I love it. I love it, and then I'm passionate about, you know, fighting, you know? I mean, I don't do this for the fame. You know, it's, it's not it's not it's not a popularity contest. You know, whether I get famous or not, you know, I wouldn't I would never let it get to my head. You know, it's, you, you should do this because you love it, not because you want to become popular. Were you kind of shocked that they didn't um, book you for the fight in Macau? I was, dude. You know, I was like, you know, they don't want want me to see me in Macau. You know, I was like, oh, I was kind of sad. Like, dang it. You yeah, because so. Kung's on there and uh, he's Vietnamese. You're via, of Vietnamese descent. I mean, it would make sense. It would give you an excuse, you know, to hop over uh, to Vietnam if you wanted to. And I, when I was looking at the card, I thought, man, Nam's got to be on this. And when I saw you weren't, I, I was kind of shocked. Did they ever talk to you about it? No, I'm, I'm no, I'm not important enough to talk to you. Like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> so, you know, we don't want Nam found the card. He's not giving me the card. That's it. Ain't you know no what's thing. funny though? You're fight of the night guy. You know? Yeah, yeah I tried. I like to think so. You'd think they would put. You know, someone who's reliable. Hey, we need a fight of the night. Slap him on the card. Oh, man, I, I, I mean, I, I do my best to put on and take a fight. You know, I, oh, man, I really thought I was going to get, you know, that Macau card. I really wanted that Macau card. You know, it wouldn't surprise me if you're on the next one. And, and another shocker, you, know, you haven't even been finished in the UFC. Knock on wood. Not yet. Knock on wood. Yeah. Yeah, well, but that's what I mean. Like, you know, fight of the night, haven't been finished. But I guess it is what it is. And um, when will you be fighting next? I'm not sure. You know, um, the December card for um, this is the December card is the finale. I think it is. Um, it hasn't been filled up yet, so maybe I can get on that card. Um, I just want to fight as soon as possible. You know, um, the sooner the better. I'm not sure yet, but you know, I hope, I hope you give me a call. I hope so too. And as soon as you do, give us a call, man. And we we'd oh, love to hear sure. about it. You know, something else I was going to talk to you about. 
be, I think it was Hickson that just came out and said he was going to be taking mixed martial arts uh, to Brazil. I think it's the 22nd of this month, and it's called like Master of Combat. And basically, oh, nice. what he's saying is same day weigh ins and no referee stoppages. I mean, from a fighter's <laughs> perspective, yeah, exactly. From a fighter's perspective, would you take a fight where there's no ref stoppages and same day weigh ins? No, because I want to eat. And second, like, man, this sometimes some guys might have really messed me up pretty bad. I want the rest to stop it, you know? I'm not going to stop it because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to look like a little punk you know, in front of my friends. But so, you know, look, I, I can lie and say, like, you know, my rest stopped stop it. I, I was okay. But I, I kind of want the rest to be there because I, I want to stop it. <laughs> you know, I will say this, though, about it. I actually agree with him on this. Like, you know, Bo Cantrell, I think it was, it fought Kimbo. And uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I think Kimbo touched like a hair on his head, and the dude went down. And you know he tapped out. I guess the strikes. I mean, yeah, that, that that's except you know you can tap out and get out of it. But I've seen some guys. I won't mention any names because you know people get hurt. But I, I've seen some guys just get tapped and go down and just curl up and pray for the referee to stop it. And that's their whole game plan: go out, make a quick thousand dollars. And get out, man. And I sort of agree with him in, on this, on no ref stoppages. You either get knocked out or tapped out or decision, however that is. Oh, yeah. but uh, Yeah, exactly. No, but, there's some, but there's some guys, there's some, yeah, sometimes the guy's out and the guy still beats them up. <laughs> yeah, and then that's another problem is that referee stoppages are iffy anyway. Well, let's yeah, jump into yeah, the yeah. Let's jump into the next question. Let's talk about your MMA school. And uh, you yeah. still have that, right? Yes, I'm, I'm here actually with some of my students right now. We're uh, this is an interview together. We're having fun. So, so it's it's doing well. It's doing good. Yeah, we're having, we're having a good time. Always fun at the Madu Academy. Why don't you tell uh, Why don't you tell everybody, uh, all the listeners for BJPen dot com, tell us, tell them a little bit bit about it, where it's at. Uh, we're located in Garden Grove, Orange County, California. Um. Uh, on the corner of Brookers and Chapman, 12122 Brookers Street, Garden Grove, California, 92841. If anyone has any questions, you know, you go to my website, www.imnan.com, or you tweet me at manfanmma. Yeah, and I'll go ahead and give your phone number out to the 7 million people that, or however much it is, that view the website this month and, and just blow up your phone bill if you don't mind. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it very much. <laughs> So you you know I did some research. I was actually curious. I know you're a black belt in a Viet and a Vietnamese combat martial art, and I won't butcher the name. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, you know, it's, it's just it's pretty much karate. It's just like you know, uh, watered down Vietnamese version of karate. That's that's, that's all it was. It's, you know, my, the, the teacher that I had with his teacher was Japanese, and you know, um, he just gave a Vietnamese name for it. But it was pretty much karate, Okinawan karate. Was that like a good base for you? A good start for your for MMA with you know just being able to to do stand up and have a solid base and learn how to throw punches. Would I mean looking back, uh, did, did that help you at all? I mean, I, I I think it did help me a lot. You know, with flexibility and uh, it kept me agile on my feet. And also the most important thing, it taught me um, discipline and work ethic. Yeah, and I, I would imagine, especially in traditional martial arts, I, I took and taught for like twelve to fourteen years before I started training MMA and stuff. And, you know, I will say this. It does take a lot to practice every single day. You're doing the same thing over and over a lot of times. Whereas, you know, when I started training MMA, and I learned from guys like you up at uh, George Grigel's gym, you know, guys that have been around like you, that every day you go in there, it's something different. And to me, I'm not even a fighter. I think that that's one of the most important things is you never know what kind of session you're going to have. You feel the same way about that? Oh, I do, yeah. Some some days are you know easier than others, and some days just like horrible. Yeah, some days you have a good day, some days you have a horrible day. So how many how many horrible days does Nam Pan have a month? Uh, every every day, <laughs> well, every day is every day is a tough day. But I just try to be positive and think that every day is a good day. Some days aren't as good as others, but it's still a good day. I, I know exactly what you're saying. You know, it, it kills me because. It, there's always something hidden about people, and you have a professional boxing record. Correct. And not a lot of people know that. You know how Rogan's always like, and he's a this, and he's a that. I don't think there's one time, maybe he did slip it in there, but, you know, Lytle, Chris Lytle, they're always like, oh, pro boxing, Chris Lytle. But I don't think that you're three and one, right? Yeah, correct. Three and one in professional boxing, and I think five and three in amateur boxing. So you don't have any desire to go back to that at all, do you? 
Oh, no, you know, um, I, I do, I mean, I wish that the UFC would, would allow us to compete, you know, striking outside the UFC. You know, for me, to stay sharp. I'm not as passionate about, about boxing as I am in MMA, but I did miss it a little bit. It, it was fun. You know, it definitely kept me sharp. Well, what do you think about the UFC's new, um, I don't even know what they termed it, but it's basically safety in training policy where you're required not to get injured. Did, have, did you see that come out? Oh, is that for everybody? It's, it's all done for the main event, guys. I'm pretty sure that eventually, if it's not for everybody, it's going to be for everybody soon because, I mean, the, the amount of people canceling off cards is ridiculous. And Yeah. Do, do you, you know, think that I'm, that's something they needed to pursue? Man, I don't know, man. I don't know. That's kind of scary. I mean, it, I mean, it, I mean, it is on you. You shouldn't get hurt anyway, but I don't know that you need to count the whole event. But, I mean, man, uh, I I, I don't I don't think so. I, I I wish they didn't, but it is what it is. So you're training right now. I mean, if you do fight in December, let's see, it's October right now. You probably ramp up at the end of this month, right? Correct. Who would you bring in for a camp? Oh, uh, usually for camps, uh, you know, like uh, depending who I fight, you know, uh, I need to go to Alpha Male and train with all those guys over there. They have a lot of talent. Like guys, the guys that, you know, the. Alex Prince doesn't know who they are, but man, these guys are good. The, the guys are just an inch away, apart, one or fight, one two fights away from getting to the UFC. So you've got a, a good solid base. Who do you do your ground training with? Uh, right now, you know, right now I just train my students pretty much. But when I have when I have time, I go to my all my black belt buddies places like in Sub Fighter and Lagoon Miguel, and then um, um, Troy Acker, um, Carlos Gracie's in uh, Orange. Yeah, those those are usually the places I go to. Or Bal Quash. Bob Quach, uh, grounded in MMA in uh, Santa Ana. Oh, okay. Who's your jiu-jitsu, who's your, uh, jiu-jitsu coach? Right, right now, I don't have one. It's just just by myself. You know, um, I was promoted like uh, three years ago, and um, don't have an actual coach right now. I just right now I just train with all the backup buddies. Have you been looking for a jiu-jitsu coach, or is is that just something that uh, you're hoping that comes along? Because there are a lot of qualified guys out there. You know, there's you know world champions and places like people like that that are always. Looking for new students. Uh, have you thought about pursuing one of those guys? Oh, I was, there was this one guy, um, like um, a very good jiu jitsu black belt. Um, no, like, I, I think name, he, he, no. he's like. Um, are, you, are you talking well, about a guy that that I'm familiar with? I, I, he's on he's on your show a lot. Okay, if you say his yeah. name, this 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 interview will probably go a different direction. So it, it it's. it's well, why, why is, why is that? I mean, like, like not the Laranja? God, are you? Uh, hello? <laughs> hello? Yeah, that, yeah you, you already, I, I don't need to hear uh, from you, Sean, to say hello. I'm talking to somebody right now. It's an M fan. <laughs> oh, Professor uh, Hanato Laranja, 27 time world champion, my favorite YouTube player. How are you doing, sir? That's right. I'm doing very good. I'm especially doing good because I see an opportunity to to change your life. Because I know you're training what? like what's a guy, uh, bow bow squash, and some that guy with the the chin, they have the chin dimples, uh, and chin alpha male. But now it's time for you to train like the old school, and we're gonna get you ready for. You're not gonna have to worry about that fight where they're gonna have a referee stoppage because we're gonna fight the old style. Like the way we was do back in uh, when we had the Shogun's living room. It's going to be like that. <laughs> I'm not sure if the phone's breaking up or I just can't listen to your accent, sir. I mean, <laughs> I'm not sure what well, you just I, said. You're talking about my accent? I think that's the part that's going to call the kettle to be black because you have a Chinese accent I can barely understand. And I was going gonna, I was gonna to help you with that one. I was going to teach you to, not, to learn Rosetta Stone. I'm not Chinese or Japanese, sir. Talking about why you train, you do that stuff, say, Chinese Kung Fu, and you do all that crazy stuff like uh, in the, that you come from traditional background, and you have that same hair, those Chinese guys. It's look like <laughs> Mo from it. <laughs> what? No, I don't. You have that hair, look like you went to go to cut from uh, Fantastic Sammy. Or maybe from also <laughs> the lemon tree. Yeah, to be honest, you watch. I don't know where Fantastic Sam's is. Yeah, you, you, I, I, I bet you don't. But when you come with me, we're gonna, we're gonna change all. I'm gonna teach you how to talk 
two women, how to, how to get some, some stuff like that. But my brother, I, I need work about you, Jiu-Jitsu. You need to, I know you was promoted to Black Belt, but we was have a lot of men. Uh, Professor uh, Laranja, are you picking up t said again? Are you talking about uh, me being a Black Belt or something? Oh, Sean, can you hear me, Sean? Hello? We, we don't have... I thought I was supposed to shut up. Oh, you were, <laughs> but I just want to make sure yeah, that you can't hear what I'm saying because... Because Nam, I think his English is hard to understand my English. <laughs> so as I was saying, you gotta be careful. I know you're a black belt, but I remember you was get put to sleep by those guys who was uh, like, look like who's like Cheech and Chong, those white guys, uh, Jeff Glover and uh, Bill Cooper. That, that's uh, that's good. how did you know that? I was like I was like a blue belt. Like, that's, that's like ten years ago. It's it Cooper, both those guys, I mean, like, I'm like uh, Santa Claus, when you know, I know who's been naughty, who's been nice, and I'm mean, check my list, and I'm gonna check that one more a lot of times. Oh, that's, 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 that's pretty good knowledge. I mean, you, you, I didn't know you were in America all that time. That's that like 2003. I don't be in America that long, but I, I watch and I hear watch, uh, through the great the great line. They tell me all that stuff. <laughs> so, man, you're not, if you're not, like, why, you, I don't understand. What, what is, you, you, you like, you know, a Latino? <laughs> Latino? I'm not Latino. I'm Asian. Well, if, if you're not Chinese, what, 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 what's you, you what? I'm, v- I'm Vietnamese. Oh, you're Vietnamese. I, I didn't know that. <laughs> what, what, what's NAM stand for? That stand for no, because I uh, think it's no. Because you you need to have some more fans. <laughs> oh. I'm, I'm gonna grow that for you, Nam fan. When you come to train with me, you're gonna you're gonna be first class. Everybody gonna start to chant your name. You're gonna get a lot of punching, and you're gonna have a lot of friends, <laughs> and you're gonna be proud. And the Chinese community gonna gonna be more proud for you, and not gonna worry about that other Chinese guy, uh, Kong Kong Lee. <laughs> Chinese guy, Kung, Kung Lee's too. Uh, yeah, both you guys, uh, whatever you guys, but he does more movies than you, <laughs> and you gotta, you gotta start to do some action films like that guy. I know a lot of people in Hollywood. I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you to do all that stuff because I can see that uh, guy. You was trained with uh, Josh Koscheck. Yes. You was trained with Josh Koscheck, I, that, that that guy from Chuff, the fighter, Chuff Ultimate Fighter. That's good. I, and I, I, I see he does Koscheck Ultimate Fighter. Yeah, that guy. I I thought he was gonna help you to 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 manage your career and to get you some movies and stuff like that. He don't do nothing for you. <laughs> he's very busy. I know he's busy coloring that hair. He's look like the the black Gene Wilder. Got out. Got out. That's right. Hey, yeah, yeah. So my brother, we got a deal. You're gonna come to train with me. You're gonna you're gonna not worry about where you. you you're training now with you, you gym and garden, wherever the garden grows. Garden Grove, Garden Grove, Cal- Garden Grove, California. That's correct. Okay, so you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna do the right thing. You're gonna start training, or you're gonna keep to get, uh, to get a split decision with that ball-headed guy, uh, uh, that white guy, Cole Miller. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Cole Miller is very good. He's very tough. You know, he's very good jujitsu. I, I was trying to play very safe in that fight. I know I was lose a lot of money in that one because I was bet against you because that guy promised me he was gonna he was gonna give you a knockout and and now that's why I'm showing some interest to you because before I wasn't worried about man fan now you're on my radar now I'm a fan now you're gonna have at least you have one fan that's Hinach. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. I'm very. I'm, yeah, you're welcome. I'm, 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 I'm a fan. It's you. That's right. So now. My brother, I can't, I can't spend all my time to, to, to talk to you right now. I got a lot of stuff to do. I got to do some training. I got to, I got to go out to, to the club to go get some, some poon chain for, for my stable. So I can't have it. I can't it myself. So I want you to. Poon chain. What is poon chain, sir? What is that? What is that? That's just for, that's for, that's what a female has. in English? Uh, to, when when, I, when two people love each other very much, two adults, or well, they love each other very much, then the guy is take the girl out to dinner, and he's take to give some R&B music, 
and to to <laughs> to do some stuff like that, listen to that, maybe watch a movie, hand a movie. Then after that, she's gonna <laughs> give to him some some of that, some her. She's gonna let him to her <laughs> vagina. So oh, can, so that's have, what that's okay. So, yeah. okay, so that's education. Well, next time I'm I'm gonna have more time, but but now I I can't. I would like to sit and tell you about the birds, you know, on on the bees. But you, you I thought you was old enough, but you still gotta get your first piece of puntang first, and then you gotta call me <laughs> and tell me how you was your experience, Nami fan. So with that, <laughs> I, I'm gonna I, say I, good night to you. Nami fan, and also, God, are you? Thank you. Thank you very much. Good night, sir.